Radio for the masses. Headline edition July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio. Four. The Messes. Yeah. Let's do this. Today's Wednesday, February 24th, 2021. 55 days into the new year. Just 310 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in the middle of beautiful downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. You know what tonight is. Tonight, we have very special guest, me. That's right. Because tonight is our AMA, Ask Me Anything. That's right. We will be taking your questions from all around social media. All right. We will be hitting the Spreaker chat room. We will be hitting Facebook. We will be heading, hitting, heading, <laughs> hitting Twitter. Uh, where else? Where else are we uh, out there? Twitter, Facebook, Spreaker, YouTube. Yeah, that's good enough. We'll be hitting those three. Okay. Or those four. That's four. 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 Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, man. I'm looking. We were talking about this all night tonight. Fries. You know, and uh, um, I did some stuff here in the bunker today. I was, I was, I needed more desk space on this side. And it's just getting, you know, it's getting cluttered. And behind this monitor here, and there's a monitor here, a monitor here, a monitor here. Uh, and below this, uh, but behind this monitor. Okay, so there is a, there's one a post that mounts back here. And then there are three arms that come off of that post. One in the middle for this monitor. And then two that come off this way that mount this monitor and this monitor. So, you know, that keeps the desk clear, right? I don't have monitor stands, so everything's up. It's it's cool. But behind this monitor, I had a tripod, right? Narrowly set up. Big, normal size camera tripod. And that came up behind this monitor. And then I had this camera mounted on the tripod up here. This camera and this camera are separate cameras for other things, like when I'm interviewing somebody or 
uh, uh, another computer, Skype, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's what these are over. Oh, you can't even see them. Okay, but anyway, that doesn't matter. But I was looking at that camera today, and the tripod legs are coming down. I'm like, man, those are just in my way. And every time I try to move something, bumps the camera, moves the tripod leg, things shift. And I was like, man, that's that's just got to go. So I took these two cameras, moved them over, and, and mounted. they're sitting on top of the monitor. And I pulled this camera down, and I put it on the monitor here, pulled the tripod out. I've got desk space. I can't believe it, man. I, I just can't believe it. I can move stuff around. I don't have these tripod legs. It's like a brand new bunker in here, man. Those tripod legs were just, uh, they, oh, no. And I can't believe I... I don't know why I didn't do this before. So now, camera's a lot lower. It's 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 lower, and it's changed the angle and stuff, and I can't adjust it, which is why it was on the tripod, because the tripod, you know, you can move it around and, and, and put it in a specific angle. Now I'm just stuck. Static. It's stuck. But I hope that works for you. All right. Okay. It looks a little brighter. It's like it's picking up. Anyway. All right. Going to have to live with it. I miss the old days, the old days when we had no cameras in the studio and I could do whatever I wanted. Nobody could see, you know, I, oh man, I miss those days because now it's like a TV production. I got to consider the the camera and lights, deed. I got to, I got to consider that deed. You know, I have to change my shirt every day. Oh, man. I didn't do that before. We're the same shirt seven days in a row. Nobody knew. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the things that went on in this bunker before the cameras. Anything went down. <laughs> All right. Uh, where am I at? Tonight's our, our AMA. Ask me anything. And uh, now, uh, like I said, we're going to be pu pulling stuff from uh, Spreaker, which is here. Uh, we'll be pulling stuff from YouTube, which is here. I'm not doing it. Uh, Rita's going to compile everything and then get it in here to me. But we will do uh, the monitor, the YouTube chat room. Uh, we'll get over to Facebook and we'll do the same thing over there and, and Twitter. So those four sources, if you've got any questions... Um, in Twitter, make it easy for Rita and just post it in uh, hashtag F2BQ, all right? Um, and and that's there. Spreaker is easy. It's just one chat room. Same thing with YouTube, and it's the same thing over at Facebook. So that all, all that's rather easy. But uh, Twitter, too many feeds, too much action going on on Twitter. So if you could just post your questions right there in hashtag F2BQ. There you go. Follow me on Twitter. At J Church Radio. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Oh, um, okay. I've got to get straight to the breaking news. We've got a lot to do tonight. And I need to pull up this really quick because this broke in right uh, before showtime. So let me uh, let me pull this up and I want to get... Uh, yeah, okay. All right, I'm close enough on this. I remember it now. Okay, let's get straight to the breaking news. Fry's Electronics, the much-loved superstore, quietly closed all of its 31 stores overnight. They are all closed today. More on that in just a minute. Well, it's happening. We talked about it. We thought about it. We didn't think it would get here, but it's happening. Your COVID travel pass is now a reality. The IATA travel pass is being developed by the International Air Transport Association, the IATA, the Global Trade Association, of which 290 airlines are a member. The IATA hopes the free-to-use mobile app will be the key to reopening borders and getting the world flying again. That's their pitch. Without the need for quarantine, authorized labs and test centers will share test and vaccination certificates with passengers through the app. And if that doesn't scare the crap out of you, 
There are multiple travel passes out there, and the common pass is already being used in a limited manner by airlines. While computing giant IBM has had a worldwide team working on its digital health pass for the last nine months and expect that launch to be soon. Scary. The Federal Reserve today suffered a widespread disruption in multiple payment services early this morning. Now, including a system that banks and businesses rely on to zip trillions of dollars around the financial system every single day. After experiencing problems for several hours, the crucial payment system, which is known as Fedwire, resumed normal operations shortly before 3 p.m. Eastern time. The other Fed services are still down, however. In a statement, the Fed blamed, and this is where it gets interesting, an operational error. That's right. Said it's working to restore services and communicate with customers. Check this. More than $3 trillion is transferred every day using Fedwire. Think about that. Yeah, operational error. There's something more to this story. You shut that down, the world will grind to a halt. Let's get the show cracking. Happy birthday to today. <laughs> Billy Zane. Billy Zane today is 56. Name I'm going to I'm going to pop over to Twitter right now. Okay. Here we go. Without googling, do not google. Don't go to IMDb. Name Besides Zoolander, name one Billy Zane movie. Go. Can't do it, can you? Come on. One Billy Zane movie. Go. Don't Google it. Come on. Can't do it, can you? One. Just give me one Billy Zane movie. Can't do it, can you? Tough. Give me one. Give me one. Come on. Can't do it, can you? The elf says, Jimmy always says to follow him, but then he turns around and yells, would you stop following me? Just saying, he gives mixed signals. uh, When did I ever say don't follow me? Oh, I'm just talking about in my neighborhood. Don't follow me in my neighborhood. Don't, Don't follow me, dude. Don't follow me. Tombstone. Oh, Titanic. That was good, Corey. That was a good one. Okay. I don't know what Orlando is. When, who? Orlando Bloom? Ken. <laughs> Ken. Ken. That's the tweet of the night, man. You're going to get the little heart right there. That was good. That was good. Gonzo Metal came in with Titanic. All right. All right. Let's see. George Thorogood today. Is 71. Name name one George Thorogood song. Go. <laughs> Our dead guy's birthday today is, moment of silence please, Steve Jobs. 1955 to 2011, died at the age of 56. Steve was an American business magnate, industrial designer, investor, media proprietor, of course. He was the chairman, chief executive officer, and co-founder of Apple Inc. and the chairman and majority shareholder of Pixar. The two Steves, Job, uh, Jobs and Wozniak, changed the world forever. Steve died at his Palo Alto, California home at around 3 p.m. on October 5th, 2011, due to complications from a relapse of his previously treated pancreatic tumor. Steve's final words were, Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Then he lost consciousness. He was just 56 years old. On this day in history, OTD 1991, after six weeks of intensive bombing against Iraq and its armed forces, the U.S.-led coalition forces launch Desert Storm, a ground invasion of Kuwait and Iraq. And 30 years later, that's right, we're still there. Fader fact. 
The original plot. Okay, now listen to me. The original plot for the movie Anchorman was about a network news team trying to escape a mountaintop plane crash while being stalked and killed by orangutans wielding ninja stars. And that's that's a fact. <laughs> one bourbon, one scotch, one beer. Very well done there, Tim. Doesn't count. Uh, looked up. Uh, not an IMDb. <laughs> I love the fader knots. I do. I love this show. And tonight is our AMA. Ask me anything. All right. Now we will be pulling all questions from Twitter, from Spreaker, from YouTube, and from Facebook. Okay. Everything will get compiled and sent in here to me. I will do my best to get all questions answered. Okay. All right. All right. Ah. Where am I? What am I doing? What was I doing? Where am I? Am I am I on schedule? I am. Fedwire. Who are the customers banks or yeah, I know, right? Let me hit this River Moon coffee. Mm. Faded black blend. River Moon coffee. Go to rivermoonwellness.com. This special cup, River Moon Coffee, and then a River Moon Coffee espresso shot. Yeah, man. It's amazing. Espresso. Espresso. Do it. Hey, that's a new ad campaign. Espresso. Do it. Zane was in all three. But no, I don't think he was in all three. He was in two for sure. No, he wasn't in one. Billy Zane wasn't in one. He was in two for sure. But he played one of the the sons of uh, what's his name? <laughs> played one of the sons. Yeah, yeah, and lived at the hotel. Yeah, that was uh, that's right. I, I believe he was in three. He was one of the sons. He was a cowboy. Yeah, he was an outlaw. So he was in three. I I don't believe he was in one. He wasn't in the first. He wasn't in the first. That's good, though. That's good. That's good. All right. Man, I love coffee. I do. Tonight, I'm going to need it. I'm going to need it. Let me tell you something. Fader night, fun, taking phone calls and all that. AMAs. When I am done after an AMA show, I'm toast. So much fun to do. So much fun. But wow. So that's why I'm drinking coffee. Madeline says, my boyfriend says, Sniper, your boyfriend is on IMDB, Madeline. I'm just telling you right now. There's no way he knew that. And if he knew that, if he's some kind of Billy Zane stalker, <laughs> you need to you need to uh, sit down to have a conversation. There's no way he knew. If if that's what that means, by the way. Zane was in Back to the Future one and two. Strangest in No, no, IPD, he wasn't in Back to the Future one. Was he? He was in two and three. In two, man, uh, that's it. I've got stuff. Okay, we're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this. Billy Zane, Billy Zane, IMDB. All right, and I'm going to pull this up but because i got other stuff I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to find out about this Back to the Future stuff. Okay, all right. Rita just said I can't be a, a annoying tonight for uh, – the AMA. Okay, let's go back. Back to the Future 2. He played Match in 1989. And and oh, he wasn't Back to the Future 1. I take that back. Wow. Didn't know. All right. Fry's Electronics. Fly <laughs> McFly. Fry's Electronics announced today that they are closing down. 
All stores, all states, effective immediately. All of this suddenly done overnight, ending a nearly four-decade run in the business. For me, personally, this is very emotional on so many levels. Now, it's not just me. It's my family, too. This morning, my daughter texted me. Oh, my God, Fry's closed all of its stores last night. Fry's was, hands down, the bestest, the greatest store, not only in the valley here where we live, where they had two locations here. We have Woodland Hills. That was my first Fry's experience. And, of course, the Burbank store with the flying saucer crashed in the front of it. Yeah, pretty cool. But it was also probably the coolest idea in the history of retail. Their stores were giant. And if you never experienced a Fry's store, I can't put it into words, but the stores were so huge that they took your breath away when you entered. I mean, just ginormous. Your heart weight rate would actually change miles of electromagnetic bliss. It's incredible. Incredible store. I remember once uh, Rita and I needed to go to Fry's for something, and my memory says that we were looking for a video security system, uh, which we didn't buy that day. But while we were in the security section of the store and at the Burbank location uh, near the back, um, Rita grabbed an empty cart that was sitting next to us. I had my cart, right? She grabs an empty cart and and walked away. And I said, hey, <laughs> you know, And she's walking in the opposite direction, and she's waving over her shoulder. See you, church. And she left me and uh, took our daughter, Deanna, with her. I took my card. I pushed it left. I headed off into the madness on my own. So much fun, right? We ended up uh, finding each other a couple of hours later, and and I, I walk up. And Rita says, you know, I'm over here and, you know, cell phones. And, and, and I walk up and our daughter, Deanna, is pushing a third cart. And I, I looked at Rita. I said, what would you get? She goes, man, I filled up the cart. Look, Deanna's got it. I said, I see that. So the next thing you know, we are an official three cart fries family. Got into the checkout line. This is a true story. That really happened. It wasn't the first or the last time either, but, but yeah, for anybody in the electronics, uh, computer music and the entertainment game, high tech game, this was the place where you went for your stuff, all of it from the craziest little part, little thing like, you know, here little stand for my iPhone, right? Sits on my fries right there. Right, little part, little tool, little wire, little thing, little component, all the way up to full blown rigs, computers, all everything here, except for that. But that computer, this computer, this computer, this computer. There's a stack of laptops right there, leaning against the wall. I count one, two, three, four laptops right there, fries. And I was sitting here in the studio today, and and I had to move some stuff around. And I found another laptop, Fry's, Dell. Forgot I had this one. I'll put this one over there. With I mean, so. Aisles and aisles of the good stuff. Fry's was truly heaven on earth. I can't tell you how many computers, drives, TVs, video games, DVDs, wire strippers, and solder that were purchased over the years. Seriously, half the stuff in my home, whatever it is, came from fries. Beard trimmer, fries. Vacuum, fries. Micro screwdriver set, fries. PCB powered cooling fan for a video card, (laughs) that's right, fries. My first DVD player, 1996, fries. It got to the point many years ago that our entire Christmas shopping list was done at Fry's. Seriously, I'm not making this up. Shopping at Fry's was the reason to leave the house every weekend. And during the week, during the week, 
They were the lifesaver when things went nuts in the studio, which happened countless times over the years. I don't know how many times Rita has heard, honey, going to fries. I need a balanced extension cable and another UPS. I'll be right back. You know, that's, that, that's fries. After walking the store and collecting my goodies came the reward, waiting in line with all of the candy, the munchies, the stuff you never heard of, the candy, the sugar, that from all around the world. Yards of wacky cable adapters in that checkout line, right? <laughs> all those little power supplies in the checkout line. The little tools, the little handy tools, the little wrenches, the little things. You know what I speak of, man. You know what I'm talking about. And I'll miss all of it. Over the last year, you could really see how things were starting to wind down at my local Burbank's uh, fries. I had to get some cables and adapters. And as I walked through the door, I could see entire aisles emptied, devoid of everything. Sections of the store where uh, display hooks with nothing on them. Areas that were typically stocked with the bits and the pieces of glorious little tidbits of tech life. All gone. And then I found myself walking down the toy aisle. The one that was always stocked with radio-controlled cars and planes and drones and helicopters. Of which I've got so many. From the micro to the macro, the big, the small, and everything in between, and all of it was gone. Something wasn't right. Right in front of the store, they had an entire aisle dedicated to electric razors and beard trimmers. A hundred beard trimmers. Quite possibly the largest collection in the world, and it was empty. Yeah, something was really fishy and getting stinkier by the minute. So I go up to the sales guy, who I've known for years. I've personally bought 10 laptops and four towers from him, and a ton of other gear, too, including the three monitors I'm looking at right now, the, the monitor stand behind it, everything here, the cabling, everything, every, every, from Fry's, from one guy. Man, the keyboard right here, Fry's. And, well, whatever, you know, you get the point. So I asked him, I said, dude, What's going on? Are you guys going out of business? And his answer was no. Um, actually, uh, the marketing people are here redesigning our store. I was like, oh, that's what they're telling you. All right. Not really buying what you're selling, but okay. All right. I get it. I had a very uneasy feeling about everything. Well, finally today, we all got the news. So rest in peace, Fry's Electronics. You will be a part of my memories, my family's memories, and cherished forever. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, our guest is me. That's right. It's our AMA. Ask me anything. Now, post all of your questions. Spreaker, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. All right? Die. We'll compile everything, get it loaded up right here, and we'll hit the ground running right after the break. Stay with me. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, the planet. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Don't follow me. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. No, don't follow me. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. I'll be right back. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you-know-who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. 
If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Rivermooncoffee.com. This is the only way forward. This is Made to Black. Make contact. KGRARadio.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, folks. It's troubling times, and fear is pushing emotions, which in turn pushes health the wrong direction. Do you ever get an ache because life is uneasy? Try Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea works on your digestive tract, helping to move food through quicker and comfortably so your health is spot on. Life Change Tea may not help with world issues, but it will help with your digestive issues. A glass a day helps keep the intruders away. So, change your life today. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. If your health game is off, get on by ordering Life Change Tea. Get the tea.com. And while you're on our site, look around at the great non-GMO organic supplements. And if you're a sales shopper, go to our specials page and see what's for you. I've been drinking the tea for 12 years and I'm sure glad for its health benefits. Again, that's get the tea.com. Get the tea.com. The tea that makes you go. Fade or not. When you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthew. You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, our special guest is me. It's our AMA, Ask Me Anything. Now, we are getting everything from social media, which includes our chat rooms, uh, Spreaker. We're pulling from there. We're pulling from Twitter. We're pulling from YouTube. And we're pulling from Facebook. All right, so post your questions there. And uh, they will get in here to me, to the studio, okay? And uh, there you go. It's going to be a, a fun night, another another fun night. I, I, I love it when we do this. And I'm already, I'm out of coffee. That's what I got to do to prep for this, man. I got to get in the zone. <sighs> Ask me anything. All right. 
Let's see. What have we got up first? Okay. Uh, from... Uh, <laughs> Am I going to announce these names? Okay, this is from Cooter Gravel. I don't know where this is coming in from, but where are the bodies buried, Jimmy? You know, uh, I know where there are a few bodies buried. I do. And, uh, I mean, one day, see, this is, I mean, do I, do I write a book, right? Do I, you know, when you write, you write those, you know, those tell all books with everything that, you know, you couldn't say publicly and stuff and you kept it and, so, and you write it just before you know, you're going to exit, right? And he, and he put that out there and then he, cause you just don't care. Um, and, and there's an ethical thing that comes down with that. You know, why do it? Just take it with you. Right. Is there stuff in there that needed to be said that people needed to know for, for other reasons, right? Without the, you know, personal attacks or embarrassing people and things. Do you do that? Well, uh, you know, there's the ethical side of things, Right. Um, and then there's the other side where, you know what, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just, just put it out there because you want to, right? So do I do that? Do I do that? I mean, ah, 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 it's tough, man. It's, that's tough. That's tough. Oh man, I've got so many stories and I've kept, we've had so many, uh, dinner parties and moments where I've almost cut loose and went, you know what? That's it. That's it. I'm going to start yapping. And I never have, I never have. And so it's that moral boundary, that ethical boundary that I just refuse to cross. I just refuse to do it. So if I do it now, then I should stick to it. There's something inside of me that says, you know what, just just take it with you. And then there's the other side that's just like, nah. You know, maybe 50 years from now, 100 years from now, my great, great, great grandkids, you know, can look back at that, that book and go, wow, uh, that's some crazy stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But that's a great, That's uh, you know, that's a great, yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. And yeah, I just, I just keep it. Yeah. I know where they're buried. I do. I do. I know where they're all buried. I do. I'm going to take it with me. All right. Next question from lack 72. What happened to not being political, Jimmy? What happened? What happened? What happened? I, I'm not political. Um, I, in fact, I'm the exact opposite of political. Um, the only times over the last uh, eight years, we've had two elections. And, and I danced politics on maybe six shows out of 1,400. Okay, so no, I'm the opposite of political. Um, uh, it's so easy, you know, today. It's so e and you know what's really funny? No, I should say uh, before November 3rd, right? So easy to be political and 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 attract and 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 jump on that bandwagon. Way too easy. Uh, too easy for a lot of people to do. And that's not only in social media, but it's mass media too. Um, today, it's a different landscape. We're right there. There are some that are trying to hang on uh, to the politics of the world and and trying to keep the uh, political train going. It's it's now nah, it's it's a bit different. Politics were easy to avoid uh, from uh, up until 2016. Very easy. Nobody really gave a crap. It's just another election year, whatever. Um, and then things changed, obviously, after 2016. And and everybody jumped on that bandwagon. Everybody just wanted to just munch on those bones. 
But here we are, uh, 2020. It's a different landscape today. It's a completely different landscape, and you can see it everywhere. Uh, you can see it in social media and and things. Um, uh, very it, look. I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. Now, you know what? Actually, uh, I'm not just. I'm not gonna. I don't care anymore. I don't care. I'll care about it again. Let's see. We're 2021. I'll care about it again. I'll do another show in 2024 election night or the day after the election, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's just not what I do around here. It's, I don't even do it in my personal life. I don't, I just, I don't do it. I don't do it. So there you go. I don't do it in my personal life. I don't, I don't, I don't talk politics. I don't, I don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. According to uh, Dapper Canuck News, in 2008, Fry's, Fry's vice president of merchandising and operations, I can't say his name, was charged by federal, I can't say that name, so I'm not even going to destroy it, was charged by federal prosecutors in an illegal kickback scheme involving Fry's vendors. I don't doubt that at all. That goes on with every company. Man, you got somebody that's uh, in purchasing, all right? In purchasing, you have got your list of vendors, and you're buying. Pro- you man, you you're getting gifts. You're getting stuff sent to the house. You're getting wine. You're getting money. You're getting. You, oh man, that is just a gnarly game. And it doesn't matter if it's clothing, electronics, cars, trains, planes. It it doesn't matter, man. Oh, the vendor list. The the per the person that is purchasing a chipset on a cell phone, <laughs> and they're going to purchase, you know, a million of those at uh, I don't know how much each. Oh, kickbacks, man, kickbacks. That's all going on. You just you just gotta try not to get caught. Okay, next. This is from Rich. Wants to know if you could have a professional chef. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me read this again. I'm reading this in real time. Wants to know if you have a if you could have a professional chef cook you anything. Who is the chef, and what is on the plate? Okay, you know what? Rita and I were talking about this guy the other day, and I'm glad you brought this up. This is weird, Rita. This question is is weird. Bobby Flay. I would have Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay knows how to cook a steak. He now he, he's a great pastry chef. You know, he, he, um, he's well rounded, but I like his approach to spices and how he looks at things. You know, and when you hear Bobby Flay say, "You know what? It's got to have that crust. It's got to have that crust." Bobby Flay, man, it makes your mouth water. I need crust. I, I need crust on my cheesecake. <laughs> I need Bobby will crust anything. Bobby Flay. I would I would do that. I would do that. Bobby uh loves his meats, his seafood. Bobby Flay is is just a great chef. You know, he's so famous today. He's so famous. But uh Rita and I have been following him for 20 years. And uh I, I enjoy his style. I really do. All right. Uh, we were talking about him the other day. I met him um, in 1999. I was going to say five. 1999. And I was in New York, uh, 2000, 1999. I'm in New York uh, with somebody that worked for me. His name was Steve. Steve Savitas, actually. And uh, Steve, we're in Manhattan. I'm staying in Manhattan somewhere. And he goes, tonight, tonight we're going to Bobby Flay's new restaurant. Two year waiting list for the reservations, man. But I know somebody and we're in. And they had opened up like that week. And uh, I had never heard of Bobby Flay, not back then, never heard of him. And so we, we my memory is we sat upstairs and, and had steaks. That's, that's what I remember. But Bobby Flay comes up to the table and there was like eight of us. And everybody's excited. They're meeting Bobby Flay and they're freaking out. I guess Jimi Hendrix, man, Eddie Van Halen, you know, at the table, Johnny Depp, something like that. They're freaking out, losing their mind. I don't know who he is. Food was good. I don't know Bobby Flay. He's a nice enough guy, though. 
And uh, I was telling Rita, she goes, what did you remember about the meal? I said, nothing. I, I, it was a pretty good steak. I think I had potatoes. <laughs> but it would be Bobby Flay. I really dig Bobby Flay. Catalina wants to know something Jim Mars has shared with you, and you have kept it to yourself all this time. Oh, Catalina, I can't do that to Jim. He's no longer with us. He's no longer with us. Um. What, uh, man, one thing comes to mind. All right. Now, you want something UFO related, though, don't you? Uh, you want something New World Order related, don't you? Well, this kind of is. I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, Jim and I uh, were talking, and I remember uh, telling Rita about this later, but Jim Mars told me about this crazy medical device that he was using that somebody had built for him. And and I forget what it did. Uh, it's, it's a long time ago, but but he told me this whole thing, and he's like, man, you've got to check it out. And, and I thought, wow, that's, that's strange. And uh, I've, got, I, I've got to try to remember more about that. But it's a personal thing. It's a medical thing. But it was this secret device that, you know, it was crazy. Like some free energy thing generator with magnets and, and things and and did something with his blood. Yeah. 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 He did tell me that. He told me the whole thing. And I just can't remember. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, Catalina gets two questions. Also, Catalina is asking, who was the strangest teacher you had in high school? And if you need to vent. Ah, okay. Ah, the strangest teacher. Okay. I, I had a lot of strange teachers, but I had a drafting teacher in, in high school down in Panama. His name was Mr. Hurd. And Mr. Hurd was brilliant, and he really took care of me, and I was uh, an advanced student, and he uh, kept me drawing in off-book projects, right? And I was just like his little star pupil, and, you know, and I was just on my own. And he was really cool, really cool. Older guy. But he was, you know, he was cool. He was straight as an arrow. Straight as an arrow. But he respected me. One day before school, I had drafting uh, for like two or three periods in a row, back to back to back classes with him in the morning, uh, all the way to lunch. And I was smoking weed with my friends outside of the drafting room behind the tennis courts behind this wall. And this Panamanian cop, Guardia Nacional, uh, came up with a Panama Canal uh, police officer, came up and caught us smoking weed. And the uh, the Panamanian cop, the Guardia Nacional, took the joint that we were smoking. I was with a friend. It was two of us. Took the joint, broke it in half, and made me eat it. And my friend, right? And I put it in my mouth, and I'm chewing it. And and as the bell's going off. Now we're tardy to class, and I'm listening to this, and I got pot in my mouth. I don't have water. I just is dry. It was it was a not cool. So they let us go. Now I'm like 15 minutes late to drafting class, right? And I walk in, and Mr. Hurd is like, uh, Mr. Church, what's up? I said, uh, 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 come here. So he walks out <laughs> into the hallway. And we're out there, and I closed the door, and I said, I need some water. And he goes, why? And I said, the police caught me smoking pot out behind the tennis courts. And he goes, what? I said, yeah, and the Panamanian cop made me eat it. And Mr. Hurd looked at me and said these words. I remember it like it was yesterday. He made you eat it. <laughs> I said, I need some water. Okay. Let's get you some water. And walked in. I thought, Mr. Hurd, you're a cool dude, man. You're a cool dude. And he was <laughs> he was strange as the day is long. 
So there it is. Okay. All right. Phil the Stalker wants to know, why, oh, why don't we do more food shows? Phil, I'm with you. We should, you know what? Not only should we do food shows, but we should maybe bring in a chef. Let's bring in a celebrity chef. Yeah. Let's bring in, what's his name? Guy. What's that diners and drive-ins dude? (laughs) From the Food Network. What was it? Gar? Guy? You know, the guy that he drives a, a red Chevy Camaro convertible 69. Bring in Bobby Flight. Bobby's too big. Bobby's too big. We should do some more food shows. I would love to do that. I think that's a great idea. I could talk about our cooking uh, that Rita and I do. Okay. So speaking of that, Phil the Stalker. Okay. Um, I'm getting backed up on the questions here, but uh, we're doing pretty good so far. Is um, Rita and I over at Costco, right? So they have the, the pre-made food that you just buy and you put it in the oven. And one of the things they had there is this ravioli lasagna. And Rita and I bought it a couple of times. Didn't really finish it and things, but it was interesting and it wasn't really done right. So Rita, a couple of weeks ago, I had this idea, uh, not, not about the lasagna. I went and bought fresh ravioli. Right? Fresh. And uh, meatballs. Really good imported mozzarella. um, Some really good sauce and things. Just to make a quick ravioli dinner. But a high quality sauce from Italy um, and things. Right? And I bring everything home. And I do the show. Do fade to black. And, And I go home after the show. And Rita deconstructed the idea and she made a ravioli lasagna. So the lasagna is not, it's laid out and then layered with, with cheese and, and the meatballs and stuff layered and baked it. Holy crap, man, you know, and the lasagna, the, the ravioli that we got was uh, spinach and ricotta. You know, so that's what's in there. So you got the ricotta cheese that's in lasagna. And and the layers of the cheeses and the way that she put that together, it was just absolutely amazing. It was so good that we did it again a couple of nights ago. A little, you know, modified it. But now I think we're on to something here. Now, this is something that I think should be shared with the world. This isn't something you keep to yourself. No, you don't do that. You don't keep that to yourself. Rita, um, uh, a few years ago, at one of our, um, now I've got to think about this correctly and, and put this together correctly. Rita loves to cook, as everybody knows. So she, this is something that should not be kept to us. This needs to be shared to the world. Rita took um, uh, pastry dough. And then made a mixture. I don't know exactly, you know, I I can't get into the particulars of this, but she took shredded chicken breast and then did a a buffalo sauce, cream sauce, with all kinds of other stuff. There was other things that were involved, but made this filling with buffalo, you know, buffalo, uh, uh, buffalo sauce this cream this thing made this filling uh spoon that rolled it into the pastry and then baked it so anyway didn't really know she's in the kitchen doing her thing so we're out on the patio we've got about 10 15 people for this dinner party and rita's bringing out you know these appetizers and finger foods and stuff and and these buffalo chicken pastry wraps hit the table Oh my, I can't even put it into words. And the look on everybody's faces, <laughs> I remember Steve Marillo specifically. Um, and it, it's things like that. Now, I don't know what the ing- ingredients were. I'm not giving away uh, anything if Rita's trying to keep the secret. I doubt that. But that's, that's something that needs to be shared with the world. 
whatever that was, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. One day, okay, uh, before the break, I'm going to share this with you. So Rita took, um, uh, how do I put this into words? Took pork bellies and baked them with Canadian maple syrup and other things. Okay, but, but that was the idea. So this hits the table. And I swear, I you have never in your life experienced anything like that. I don't know how Rita put it together. So should we share this kind of stuff with the world? Should we do that? Should we do a cooking show? I think we should. I think that's a great idea. You know, Stacy has been working on the Fade to Black cookbook, and I know that that is coming together. Um, and Stacy is probably listening tonight. And uh, if uh, Stacy wants to pop up uh, the email address for that, look, yeah, who's in this shot? Oh, that's Brad. Okay, this is Brad. That's Brad Harris. That's me. I'm trying to think what we're doing here. What do we? Oh, this is uh, this is the Juicy Lucy night. We made the stuffed hamburgers, right? I think that's what this is because I see the shredded cheese that Brad. Yeah, that's that's what's going on here. That's a great picture. All right. <laughs> Oh, man. Tonight's our AMA. Ask me anything. I'm going to take a quick break, and uh, we will continue with all of your questions next. This is Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. Now, post your questions in Spreaker. Post your questions in Twitter. Post your questions in YouTube. Post them in Facebook. We're getting them all compiled in here in front of me, and we're going to get to them all. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Hello, my name is Billy Carson, and I'm a best selling author and the founder of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Together with my team, we have built an all new conscious streaming TV platform designed with every family member in mind. If you have ever wanted to travel the world and attend lectures and workshops from your favorite speakers but weren't able to, look no further. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. There are dozens of workshops and lectures from speakers you know and love. We have also included amazing categories to assure that your consciousness is entertained and elevating on a daily basis. Amazing interviews, ancient history, ascension knowledge, wisdom teachings, documentaries, conspiracies, mysteries, health and fitness, conscious cooking, meditations, finance, yoga, and so much more. To start your free trial on any mobile device or computer, surf to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's Forbidden Knowledge with the number four, ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Again, visit ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. 
When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Hello, I'm Kathleen and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. <laughs> We're of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. Welcome back, Fade to Black. This is our AMA. Ask me anything. Post your questions in Spreaker, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Getting everything compiled and sent in here uh, to the studio. Lots of questions, and I will get to uh, all of them uh, tonight. I, I I promise you that. Okay. All right, let's see. Where are we? Okay, let's see. M is asking, have you ever had a completely frightening moment or event occurring in the space between yourself and something undeniably unexplainable, possibly something you have never spoken about? Do you feel weird right now? Okay, now, uh, something happened. I didn't even mention this to Rita. Uh, something happened a couple of weeks ago, and it was uh, very strange. And uh, it was right after we had Steve Bachman on the show. Oh, Steve, uh, by the way, uh, uh, did a great Bigfoot show with Steve. He sent uh, he sent me a set of Bigfoot magnets uh, for the refrigerator. Uh, they look um, uh, they're amazing. Um, he they're custom made. Got a magnet on the back, and uh, there's one. He sent me like six, I think six or eight. There's another one, and here is another one. Thank you, Steve, for these. These are really, really cool. Rita loves them. Um, is uh, okay. So it was in the morning, uh, about eight o'clock. Rita gets up early. I don't. Uh, she gets up early every day, and and she's gone. And, and I'm sleeping and I am, uh, sleeping. I'm on my back. Uh, I'm out. And then on my left thigh, on the top of my left thigh, um, I feel uh, it was pretty big too. It was, it was a feeling about, you know, size of a hand, you know, like this, uh, push down on my left thigh, just push down. 
and I, I'm sleeping, and I feel the push, and my right hand, I feel over on the bed. Rita's gone, and then my I, my eyes pop open. Right after that happened, I was just bring, and the adrenaline rush, the panic that just went through my body. I just like, holy crap, there's nobody in here. The bedroom door is closed. And I immediately look for my dogs. I mean, I wasn't like in paralysis or anything. I'm moving. I sat up and Malcolm is on the floor uh, over here. He's crashed out. So it wasn't him. And that's what I was hoping it was. And Luna, uh, Teddy wasn't there. Luna is under, under the bed. And I just, woof, man, my heart about pushed out of my chest. And... And it took me a couple of minutes to get my head together. And and I then immediately brushed it off. I brushed it off. I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to go into any zones. I didn't I just didn't want to go there. And maybe, you know, we just had Steve on the show and he was talking about this kind of stuff. So maybe that was it. And that's what I'm thinking to myself. And and I get up and I go downstairs and and Rita's outside on the patio. She's like, You're up early. I was like, yeah, yeah, but I didn't say anything to her, and I just kind of kept it to myself, but that just happened. I was, you know, and now what is, I don't know, I don't know, but it happened, and it was a definite thing, and it was, it was, you know, I had blankets on, and it, it was just like a real, like, push down onto my thigh. It was, it was trippy. It was trippy. I thought Rita was like waking me up, but uh, there you go. All right. Next question. Um, Jay wants to know if you, Jimmy Church, would ever set up a dead man trigger. Uh, I don't know. What's a dead man trigger? Somebody help me here. Hold on for a second. Dead man trigger. Okay, let's see what that is. Dead man switch. Dead man switch alternative name is a switch that is designed to be activated or deactivated if the human operator becomes incapacitated. Such ah uh, okay all right blah 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 through death loss uh, kind of um I don't know that I uh, I would leave that up to Rita. I I I don't know I don't know I don't know I haven't really given that much thought. The only the only time I've ever considered something like this, right? Like, man, I would not want to be in that kind of state. Is um, I'm trying to think of the Metallica song about the the guy that comes back from war and he's like, you know, he's paralyzed, and I I I, I would not want to be in that state where all you have is your mind. Right and you know your eyes, but nothing else. I, 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 I would not. No, no, no. So, and then you can't even speak what you want at that point. A dead man trigger. Right, take me out of here. You're, you're stuck. I, I wouldn't want to be in that position. Um. So, but have I discussed this with anybody? Have I put forethought into this? I have not. Maybe we all should. Maybe we all should. Dead man switch. Dead man's trigger. That's a great question, Jay. All right. Next up, question from the viral side. Is Danny Carey from Tool the greatest drummer of all time? Oh, man. Okay. Look, uh, possibly. When you get into... There's a few zones. Well, you kind of have this in every classification of musician. But drummers are a unique breed, and I love drummers. I do. And I was watching some stuff uh, uh, just today. Uh, I was watching, uh, and yesterday I was watching uh, some Neil Peart stuff. Um, but I'm watching drummers all the time. Drummers fascinate me. And when you get to a certain level of drumming, I think they're all good. You know, they're all great, and they're all different in their own ways. Because I've got friends of mine that, uh, I'll, I'll be straight up, 
uh, Chris Frazier, who I have seen play the drums a hundred times, you know, uh, uh, in the studio, live, uh, all that stuff. Chris Frazier, every time I saw him play, I thought he was the best drummer in the world, that there cannot be a better drummer than Chris Frazier. Um, but Scotty Slam, Scotty Slam, look him up. Scotty Slam, uh, a, a good friend and everything, but every time I saw him play, going back, you know, 30, 35 years, I swore he's the best drummer. There, there's nobody better, right? Um, and I'm always pulling that into consideration. There are just so many uh, great drummers out there. And, uh, yeah, so is uh, Danny Carey the greatest? Man, he's he's up there. There's there's no question about it. There's no question about it. That drummers, you know, I I hold them so equal because they get to this level of sophistication. I can't play drums, and and I appreciate it so much. So there you go. That's a that's a that's a great. I love drummers. Steve uh, Reigstad liked your eulogy for fries, but the night Rush Limbaugh died, crickets. Politics aside, Rush did great things for talk radio. What say you? That's a, you know, that's what I didn't appreciate uh, about when Rush passed was how quick, you know, he's he's just left this earth, right? He's died. His body's still warm. And how quick so many out there were just wanted to just trample on his body. And then there were others out there that chose to praise him um, and ignore some of the things that he said uh, in the past. And so you have a weird situation with Rush. I posted some stuff on uh, immediately when uh, the story broke, and I posted it on social media, and I just watched the anger and and the the – the fighting that was going on from both sides. I was like, you know what? This isn't worth it. You know, and I pulled the post down. I just didn't want, let, let the guy, let the guy just leave this world and go to the next, you know, and whatever's out there waiting for him is there and, and just leave it. I, you know, now did he do a lot for talk radio? I remember, um, I remember this. All right. I'm going to go back. When when Obama was elected, right, keeping politics out of the show, but election day. And uh, so I'm with, uh, do I really want to say this? No, I, I can't say who I'm with because he was head of one of the major networks. Um, but we were listening to Rush in the car. And Rush says this. <laughs> I remember like it was yesterday. And when was that? 2008? Um, Rush says, I have got, I have got sources at polling places around the United States. And the CIA has agents stationed across the United States to make sure that Obama gets elected, and this is an outrage. And I'm listening to this on the radio, and I thought, is Rush believing what he is saying? Because it's BS, right? <laughs> but is he believing this? Now, people are listening to this, and they're freaking out. He's got a huge audience. But is Rush believing what he is saying is it just entertainment look so what he is saying he can't be held accountable for who's going to sue him what the cia is going to sue him right no they're not going to do anything what he was saying was so sensational but he got away with it because there was no responsibility tied to it legally or otherwise right so that's it CIA is going to take him to court for defamation? No. So he got away with that. But that that's not the point. The point is, does Rush believe it? 
And I came away from that. I remember the head. I'm not going to say what network, but we were laughing. We're like, man, <laughs> what? What? And, and, and at that point, my mind was made up about Rush. And I'm going to leave it right there. Okay. All right. Let's see. Armando Solar Zana wonders. Any thoughts on the hollow earth? Mm. Mm. The hollow earth is a possibility. It's a possibility for a lot of reasons. Um, today, it's, 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 it's possible for a lot of reasons. Okay, it is. Today, I think there is less and less evidence to Earth. Okay, uh, but the version of the hollow Earth that has been represented, right? A solar system down there and, and, and plants and, and trees and cities and population and, you know, this globe. No, that version of hollow Earth? No. I mean, I have a hard time with that. I have a hard time with that version, right? The utopia, the thing, and cities and technology and and, 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 and this and that, right? Um, no. But could there be a, a culture that moved underground and figured out a way to live uh, deep in, you know, caves, uh, volcanic tubes, uh, access and then learn to live without sunlight. You know, they have they have their own light. Maybe electricity. Okay, but candles, whatever. But uh have learned to live without sunlight and have adapted to that. Okay. Is it possible they figured out a way to eat and things? Uh would they be an advanced culture? I don't think so. But is that possible? And are they still there? Did they live there once and maybe they're not around anymore when it extinct? Um, but I think that part of the hollow earth is a distinct possibility to the ant people, right? Too many things about this over the years where I think that there is a version of the hollow earth that is uh, pretty solid. Okay. All right. Let's see. Next up. Slam Diego Kristoff is asking, Jimmy, do you recommend the Fender Basement app? I do. I do. Are you talking about, okay, the version that excites me, the 410 blackface, wide open. You just put every knob on 10 all the way across the board. Boom. Um, I had a friend of mine who was a guitar player in a band with uh, R.T. Scott and the Delta Rebels, um, Eddie. And uh, he's one of the most amazing guitarists ever. He's no longer with us. Um, and uh, he passed away a number of years ago. But uh, And his dad just recently died, too. I don't want to get into that. But his rig, and it was amazing. Man, he had one of Jeff Beck's strats and, and, uh, that Jeff Beck gave him, like a 58 strat. But his rig which was so loud that sat off to the side of the stage was two amps. He had a Mesa boogie head and a Marshall cabinet. And next to it, he had a fender 410 basement that every knob on every amp was on 10. And we had to put a board in front of them, like a, a, a four by eight plywood that we took with us. That sat on a stand in front of it with the microphone because it was too loud uh, for the audience. We couldn't put these things on the stage. That Fender 410 basement on 10 had the most singing, amazing sound that it's it's just undescribable. So, yes, I will stand by the 410 basement blackface. Sarah Ann is asking... Uh, if you could visit any star system in our galaxy and you couldn't defer to Rita, which one would you choose? Oh, man. Uh, I got to go Proxima. I got to go Alpha. I got to go Alpha Centauri. I got to go Proxima. I got to go there. It's four and a half light years away. But 
uh, there are uh, a few planets that are confirmed. It's a binary star system. Things are in the Goldilocks zone. And I think there's some action going on out there. Um, plus, it's four and a half light years away. You can get there pretty easily. So I would go I would go Proxima A, Proxima B, Alpha Centauri. That's That's where I would go. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I could go to another galaxy, uh, I would go to Andromeda. Now, Andromeda is our closest galactic neighbor, but it's also bleeping big. Big. I think it's twice as big as the Milky Way. And uh, I think there's a lot of special things going on in Andromeda. So, uh, closest star system uh, Proxima, Proxima A, Proxima B, Alpha Centauri. I would do that, but if I could, I would, I would go to Andromeda. I would go to Andromeda. Nearly impossible, but <sighs> that's what I would do. Okay, where am I at? M Michael Dean wants you to choose between what? Okay, what? Same. Okay, this is great though. Want you to choose between a 1961 Fender Reverb tank or a Gold Klon Centaur? Um, man, ah, I gotta go Gold Klon. Yeah, yeah. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. Are you thinking about switching out? Is that uh, where you're going with this? What what they're talking about here? Um, uh, Fender. That famous reverb sound that they had wasn't created with a big hall. It wasn't digital. It was before digital. They had uh, what they called a reverb tank. And it's a metal box, about yay big, with springs in it. Springs that are stretched across. And then you have a signal going in, signal going out. And the signal runs through these springs. Right? The audio is running through the springs. And that creates the reverb effect. It was genius. And to this day, all the digital reverbs out there, all of that technology, and it's all cool, but nothing sounds like a Fender Spring reverb. Nothing. But there are replacements. So, yeah, maybe uh, that gold clown's the way to go. That's a that's a tough call. That's a that's a coin toss. That's a coin toss, but there you go. Sean from NorCal is asking directly, what does that mean? It's not through his representative. Jimmy, if you were out in the woods, okay, hold on, hold on for a second. Okay, there you go. Jimmy, if you were out in the woods with your family and a big foot, which one of your family members would you push in front of you to get away? <laughs> oh, man. That's a funny question. Uh, you know, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I've been in a few moments, uh, a few things uh, with with my family and friends over the years, crazy stuff, and and I never ran. I was always the dude. I was always the dude, and and I don't mind being the dude. I I, I just don't. I remember. Um, uh, there was this massive car accident outside of our office in Pasadena, 1985. And I was at my drawing board, uh, which was in front of this window. <clears throat> and I'm looking out the window as I'm drawing, and I see this accident happen. <sharp inhale> Just crazy. Everything happened right in front of me. And I run out <clears throat> next door. The office next door was the owner of the building, and he had a real estate office with like 10 people uh, that worked with him in that office. They all run out. It's in front of a gas station. Across the street is like the Red Onion or something over here. Um, a busy intersection. Madre and like Foothill Boulevard in Pasadena. Madre Street. And, and this accident happens. And we all run out, and immediately there's like 50 people standing there and nobody is stepping off the curb. I am running and I blow past everybody and I run straight up to the car, uh, one of the cars, and it was a Volkswagen station wagon. And I rip open the door 
and I get somebody out of the car. And then I go over to the other car, which was, ironically enough, a big, white, like, 1965 Pontiac station wagon. Big, massive, iron, American metal. And I go up to that car. Nobody's running out in the street. It's just me. And I remember yelling, I need some help. Uh, and, And nobody's stepping off of the curb. And the owner of the building that owned the real estate office, he's like, is everybody okay? I'm like, what do you... And I run up to the station wagon, and I'm pulling on the door. I can't get it. I rip it open, and there's this little old lady from Pasadena. She had to have been 80. She was too short to look over the dashboard. She's behind the wheel, and uh, uh, she didn't have a seatbelt on. And uh, the person in the—it it, it was, it was bloody. It was, it was a bad scene. And I take the lady out of the car— and little old, and I set her on the curb, and nobody helped me. Nobody. And I, I just don't get So I don't have fear when it comes to that. I let adrenaline and everything else take over. You just do the right thing at the moment. So if Bigfoot pops up in the woods and my family's there, Bigfoot's probably going to have an issue. I don't have a problem <laughs> with uh, standing in front and taking charge. I don't. I don't. So, Sean, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint. Um, no, and and Rita wouldn't have to push me either. She knows I would uh, go out there and 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 take care of business. But that's that's an example of um, a, a situation where I, I I don't think I just do. I take charge, you know. So there you go. All right, Scuba Girls is asking where will there be more H Factor. Yeah, we've been so busy. Um, uh, Our video studio is sitting there. We've got scripts. We've got ideas and stuff. We've just been too busy to get that shot. Life got complicated uh, for us. But uh, there will be more H-Factor coming. Okay? All right? There will be. Uh, There's a lot of ideas there that uh, we've got cooking. And uh, with that, I am going to take a quick break. Where am I at? That's... Here, here, I am here. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight is our AMA. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. I'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk. Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRA Radio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Cardonel, tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Fade or not. When you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. (laughs) KGRARadio.com You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight is our AMA. You can post your questions in Spreaker, in our chat rooms, YouTube, Facebook, and of course, Twitter. And we will get to all of them. We're compiling everything and getting them in here uh, to the studio. And uh, as we get through these, uh, maybe uh, we will also open up the phone lines, but... uh, 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 maybe nine o'clock, and we could do that too as well. Okay, and uh, but right now, uh, let me get back to the questions. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. All right, uh, from JC Stream, what bands were you in and or helped produce music? Well, um, uh, I was. I was in a lot of okay. Uh, ba- the the basic bands that I had, uh, the first real band uh, that, uh, and I look back and think about how great that band was, uh, and what we could have done with it was Anthem, and that was my high school band, and uh, uh, just an incredible uh, bunch of talent in that band that uh, everybody is still out there playing today and doing things. We had Jerry Reese Camp on drums, uh, uh, one of the world's best drummers, great singer too as well, and he still uh, has got a great band in Indianapolis uh, that he is out there playing with uh, every night. Uh, we had uh, Brent Barker on guitar uh, along with myself, and Brent, a very successful guitar player, and he's been out here playing at the NAMM show with the Montrose stuff and. And uh, a great, great uh, guitar player. Um, uh, just amazing for him to go on to his uh, very successful career. And we had Jimmy Brune on vocals. And Jimmy, still, to this day, I think is one of the most talented songwriters out there. Um, and you can find all of these guys on Facebook and Twitter and stuff. And Jimmy's always posting his newest material. Uh, a great, great singer and songwriter. I was just jealous uh, with his ability, and I, I, you know, and I looked back at that band and thought, uh, any one of these guys is going to be like the most famous person in the world. That the talent was too extreme, and it wasn't because of our band. I recognized the talent, and and now going, you know, that was 1980, right? 1981, and and here we are in 2021, and I know how successful of uh, a career each one of them had. Uh, we had a couple of different bass players uh, that didn't go on <laughs> to uh, a music career. So I'll leave that part of it aside. But Anthem was a great band. Um, we recorded uh, one demo, and and back then, three songs in a recording studio was a big deal and very expensive. 
Um, but uh, we did that, and then the the band just uh, kind of broke up, and I came to California, and and that was the end of it. But what what a great band uh, that was! So here in California, uh, the main band that I was in back in the eighties was a band called Emergency. Again, we did a demo, um, played all over the place for two or three years, uh, up and down the Sunset Strip, and oh, all around Southern California. And again, another great band and a fun band. Um, I had a, a great time with that. After that, I was in a uh, a few other things that I don't want to go into. It doesn't matter. There was a lot of different projects I was involved in. Uh, then I was in a punk band called the Foam Decoys that I miss. That was a great band. The singer is 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 no longer with us. Uh, the drummer Tony Portillo uh, showed up at uh, our christmas party last year at the rainbow and i hadn't seen tony since probably 1990 you know 1989 somewhere in there been a long time since i seen him uh but uh, it was great seeing tony um but uh that was that now as far as bands that i've produced i i i've forgotten more than i remember but um back then in the sunset strip there were a lot of very successful bands and and our studio was on the sunset strip so we were cranking bands in and out of there constantly out of that studio. Bad Blood, uh, we did out of that studio. Hans Naughty, oh man, and they're getting ready to do a reunion. Uh, I think I did, I think I did one of their albums too as well. Hans Naughty, uh, another band called The Wild um, that Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses. Uh, he was the keyboard player in that band. Um, uh, so just, just sitting here thinking so many bands, uh, uh, as well. And, and other things that, that came later. Oh, Fuego at intro. I produced and I did that. I produced and engineered that uh, with Rudy Sarzo, and that was a great album too. I'm very proud of that. It was a Cuban band, and all of this stuff you can look up um, online and and go and check it out. So there you go. And you know, and the music career for me just uh, just stopped. Uh, you know, and that's in, and uh, uh, I got into radio. So I really haven't done anything in, in the last 15 years, uh, except for my own stuff. So there you go. Okay. Uh, from Ivy Smith, have you heard anything about planes not being allowed to fly over a certain area of Antarctica? I have. Is this, if this is true, do you think that there's a paranormal reason behind this? I think there's a lot of reasons behind it. Um, I am when you look at uh, Google Earth and you try to get over uh, the South Pole where things suddenly mysteriously just aren't there. I find that strange. okay that that part to me is weird. And the the obvious question is why are they trying to hide something? Or, At Google's excuse, I find that strange. There's a lot of grayed out areas. You can go all over Antarctica and you can zoom in with extreme detail and it's fun to do. And then the closer you get to the South Pole, the less information that is there. And then you go into these grayed out areas that are not visible. And I find that strange. Why? What are they hiding? It's ice. It's penguins. What What are they hiding? Um... So there's that. And then there is the question of flights being able to fly over these areas. And this is what, this is the official stance on that, um, that if anything technically goes wrong, there's no chance for rescue, right? If anything, right, plane crash, there's, that's it. That's it. You're, there's no, ch so they are trying to keep everybody safe, Right. Now, do you buy into that? Is there, 
is there if I go and and rent I lease I rent a 747 with a lot of gas a lot of fuel right the same 747 or 777 that can fly from Sydney to Dubai right half around the world so uh, there's no problems with fuel can I fly around and over the South Pole. Will they let you do that? No. I don't believe that they will. Why? You know, I, we sign off on everything. Right? There's no consider If we crash, don't worry about rescue. Right? Whatever. Will they let you do it? No. So Why? You know, I just find that strange. Is there an entrance to the hollow earth? You know, what is it? What is it that they're they're hiding? And they're hiding it down there, uh, not with just uh, overflights, but they're doing it with uh, Google Earth. It's obvious. It's there. Um, any research jumping into this can't do it. Um, if you go and pay to go to one of the research stations down there, are you going to be able to, you know, get in a snow cat and just start driving? No, they, you know, can you get in a helicopter and take off? No, you can't do that. They, they, they don't allow any of it. Why? Is it just safety? Okay, well, let's take safety off the map. I'll give you the release form. Let me and and my friends go. Let's. Go. We want to check this out. You can't do it. So there you go. All right, so yeah, is there a paranormal? There's a lot of reasons uh, behind it, and I don't know what they are. All right, imagine this. You are heading the Civilian Intelligence Agency. Okay. I guess, is that CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency? Who do you hire as your director and Why? Mmm. 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 You know, I'm 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 just gonna throw this out there. Chris Mellon. Chris Mellon would be the cat for the CIA. Cause he would sing like a bud. Yeah. So but if he was still alive, Jim Mars, Jim Mars, <laughs> put Jim Mars head of the CIA. You know, I would, I would go in that direction. I would go with somebody that is smart, somebody that loves this country, somebody that's going to take care of business, but somebody that's not going to take any BS as well. Um, and somebody that I could trust, Jim Mars would have, would have been amazing head of the CIA. But Chris Mellon in this whole, you know, would that be a test to see if he's really about disclosure and bringing things out? You know, give him the the keys to the car, see what happens. Yeah, yeah, Chris Mellon, I would consider that. I know it goes against the grain of things that I've talked about, but that's that's and. It's other stuff. Doesn't matter. By the way, has anybody read uh, the latest TTSAFSEC filing? Well, if you haven't, it's out there. It's part of the public record right now, but it's very, it's a very interesting read. They're done. They're just going to focus on entertainment. And they mention in there that they may be looking for somebody to add to their board uh, with an entertainment background so they could focus on movies. Um, there you go. All right. All right. So there you go. Okay. Let's see. This is from David, David X Pendleton. Name a band that you thought was great, but received little popular critical acclaim. Oh man. That is so easy for me. There is one that constantly, it's P-I-L, Public Image Limited, P-I-L. Not only, and there are moments with P-I-L 
where I thought that they were the greatest band possible. Bigger than anything else. That you, I'm talking about talent and songs and things and production and ideas. And I thought that it was perfection. It, uh, nobody knew about that band. They had their cult following. They had their cult. Fo- they had their thing going on. And man, but PIL album, PIL CD, PIL cassette, you know, the generic album cover. Um, Oh, man. You know, Steve Vai on guitar, Johnny Lydon. Uh, absolutely it just uh, incredible. I mean, who's on uh, Tony Thompson on drum? Man. Oh, ooh, blah, blah, blah. perfect band. Perfect songs. And didn't get the recognition that they deserved. And you can go back, try to find videos, try to find concerts, try to find things. They just never got what they deserved. They should have been the biggest thing ever. You know, talking about, you know, Van Halen, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, you know, talking about these these things that, you know, just these big successful things. And PIL should be right there in that conversation with everybody. And they didn't get it. Wasn't fair. Wasn't cool. So, yeah. That's a great question, David. And uh, I think about that all the time. I do. I do. Okay, where am I at with these questions? Let's see. Armando says, is there a connection of the phenomena to power lines, nuclear facilities, geological magnetic sources of energy? Uh, I, be, ooh. Hmm. I understand where you're coming from, and I'm going to say yes to this, but not for the reasons that you think. But the choices that these energy companies make to place uh, these facilities, there's so much thought going into it, very specific reasons for these locations. And... Do they um, do they understand this? But here's the flip side. Do the power line, after they select a location, right, and all of this power is running off the, the grid and heading out across the country, does that affect the geography? Seriously, two phenomenon, two, the possibility of opening up portals, Two paranormal and supernatural events. Two Bigfoot. How about UFO sightings and and things that happen over these facilities after the power gets flipped on? That is where I don't think it's it's they're not placing the facilities there because of a paranormal or supernatural aspect to it. No, but I do think that something happens after. Absolutely, Rita and I. Uh, we're looking at houses. We were looking at homes around the valley a couple of years ago, and and uh, and we were, we're driving. We're looking at homes. Uh, last summer, summer before, two years ago, Rita will have to help me out on that. I think it was before the pandemic, and we found this killer house. Perfect, big chunk of land. I mean, for the valley too, right? It was like a half acre. And it was perfect. Big, big house. Nice. We're like, oh, wow. Right? The price is right. The price is too good. So we drive over to the house. And we and and as we are getting closer, in the background, we can see the massive power lines that run across the valley. And where the power lines run in the valley, you can look on Google Earth. You can see that it is just open fields, right? There's nothing there but these power lines and obviously nothing underneath it. But it, they're dominant here in the valley. You can see them. And we're getting closer to those power lines. And Rita was like, oh, no, no, no. No, we're getting too close. And uh, we've got it, you know, in the GPS. And I make the left-hand turn. <laughs> and we pull up to the house. And the backyard 
is power lines. And I'm talking about the most ma- get out of the carny here from the street. I'm like, no, pass. <laughs> there is no way. And the backyard was so cool. But the backyard was facing the power line field. And that's what you would look at. So we're out there barbecuing, looking at 40 power lines, you know, 100 yards above your head. Nah, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. Too much stuff going on uh, with that stuff in direct reference uh, to your question uh, there, Armand. Uh, let's see. From Nelson. Oh, this is covered up. Okay. Do you think the Sumerian story is the true story of everything? I think it's close. I think it's close. The The thing is, uh, for me, with the Sumerian tablets, is the level of detail that is there when it comes to a spacefaring civilization or the creation of planets or or uh, snipping of DNA, cloning, creating another ray, uh, these things, right? Gold and, and what the gold was used for. There is an aspect to this where 5,000 years ago, when these tablets were created, there is no thought of science fiction. There isn't tales like this 400,000 years ago, right? Uh, these, these things that are presented in the Sumerian tablets, depending on how you want to translate them, uh, Zachariah Sitchin uh, did, a, did a good job. I think that Zachariah uh, took certain liberties and freedoms uh, to the translation. But I think by, by and large, he was accurate. And you can go and look at the translations through software and see that, you know, Zachariah is pretty close. So where does that come from? That's that's pretty heavy stuff. I think that the Sumerians were documenting their knowledge. I I, I really do. And now it pushes the boundaries, though, of of what normal society will accept. That they are going to say, ah, ah, it's just tales. You know, it's stuff that's handed down. It's their folklore. It's their mythology. And it, this oral tradition that was repeated. And it just got blown out of proportion. And and that's the... You, you, no. There are a, a big chunk of the Sumerian tablets. Um, a big chunk. The majority. I think 5,000 of those tablets. five or 10,000 of the, the tablets uh, deal with uh, the creation stuff. Um, and Inky and the Anunnaki, the rest of them are talking about daily life and accounting and, and crops and laws and, and, and families and think where they just documented daily life. So why would they go and take great care to speak about, you know, schools and streets and song and music and math and, and laws and courts and education and trade and, and and seasons and and, and 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 again crops and and things and taxes, you know, talk about all of this stuff, and then have this other chunk of of stuff about the Anunnaki. It, it you know, do you dismiss one and not the other? Doesn't make any sense. Why would they just fabricate things? You know, so yeah. I I think it's pretty close. I really do. I really do. That's a that's a great question, Nelson. Thank you for that. From Ray Leonda, Jimmy. I'm still curious of that Malibu dive search you and crew did. Are you going to do another dive? That was horribly expensive. A uh, and E Networks uh, paid for that. Um, we went out on a big boat. Big boat. I don't even know how many feet it was. Big, 100 feet. Um, big boat. We had a, a huge crew, um, very expensive equipment. We had the sonar and other stuff uh, that we dropped into the water, cameras. And uh, uh, very, very, very expensive uh, to do. 
um, something like that. I mean, you're, you know, you're getting into, you know, a hundred grand, a couple of hundred grand to go and do that for eight hours, uh, to do another dive. Uh, would I like to do it again? I would, but I would have a different submersible. I would have something, uh, we had something that was good to 2000 feet and, but that was to the extreme. So we get to 2000 feet and it was failing. You need something that is, it was bigger and better, maybe even a manned submersible, which there's only a few things on planet earth that can do that. That's it. There isn't hundreds of these. Um, there's just a few, uh, but I would, I would, I would like to go back and explore that area. Um, I think it's fascinating, fascinating, too many sightings and, and things that have been documented over, over the years, not only in that area, but coming in and out of the water and above the water, too many, too many things. But um, you have the Marine base that's right there. You have the Navy base that is right there. And um, uh, they don't want people going out there doing these things. It's, it's very, very tough. And I think that there is some kind of, whether it's alien or human, but there's some kind of electronic countermeasures that go on in the water there. You can't just go down there and, and check things out. Everything electronically gets messed up. And everybody that has gone out there, including us, that has uh, you know gone out there and tried to do something, same issues involved. E electronics just won't run. It just won't run. What? It's No. They're, no, they shut it down. So there's something going on there. Uh, and I'm not sure what, but yeah. And the imaging that we had from 2014, it's still the same today. Uh, that hasn't changed um, out there. And you would think if it was just an anomaly that was done with the sonar scanning uh, by Google, you know, to map the, the coast of the United States, that that would change. It hasn't. It's still the same. And uh, I still pop out there uh, from time to time uh, in Google Earth to see if there's any changes. No, it's all the same. The Sycamore Shelf off of the coast of Malibu. Um, I'm right up against a break. This is Fade to Black. This, <laughs> this is our <clears throat> AMA. And uh, before we get to the break, I want to talk to you about Virtual Shield. Virtual Shield is the only VPN that I will ever use because they have a strict no log policy and built into their software from the ground up is everything for your privacy protection. Virtual Shield routes your internet through advanced encrypted servers across the globe to prevent your internet service provider from being able to track your internet traffic. That's what you want. All right, now it's very simple to do. Go to virtualshield.com forward slash fade to black and you will get Virtual Shield today for 50% off. You can also click on the link below in the video description box. All right, simple. Get Virtual Shield VPN now. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black, our AMA. Ask me anything. Post your questions in Spreaker, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. I'll be right back after this short break. Hi everybody, this is Rob Halford, the Mental Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Why is it we're not very good with our health regiment? until it's too late. We don't put oil in the car until the engine blows up. When the body's out of balance, your health is not so good. Give your body some love. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Try our Life Change Tea, which cleanses you from harmful intruders. A clean colon is one of the ways to bring the body in balance. We also carry organic supplements to help you get where you need to go. So do your body a favor. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. You can even visit our sales page to save some dough. Uh, does anybody call money dough anymore? Anyway, if you're looking for short, helpful health tips, go to YouTube and punch in Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. 
So, log on to getthetea.com, shop, get balanced, then learn some cool tips at Health Matters Now. You'll be glad you did. That's getthetea.com. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. KGRARadio.com. When you're in the house for longer periods of time, you can see them flying or running across the floor. Ooh, yuck. They're unhealthy, gross, and disgusting. Bugs. I loathe bugs. We keep a clean home, but occasionally bugs show up. Well, I found something that is tougher than bugs. Orange Guard. On contact, it kills hidden bugs, including ants, roaches, and fleas. Plus, Orange Guard is a residual repellent. All of the ingredients of Orange Guard are on the FDA generally recognized as safe list. Orange Guard may be used around food, humans, and pets. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Orange Guard, available at orangeguard.com, Whole Foods, and Ace Hardware. secret i love ponies i really love ponies i'm serious i couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush why fade to black because you never got that pony damn it this is fade to black with jimmy church on the game changer radio network and kgra the global radio alliance Welcome back, Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, our AMA. Post your questions right there in Spreaker, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And I've got a lot of questions. Trying to get to them all. Um, And there you go. Okay. And I just wanted to uh, jump back. And I'm looking here. I, I see this picture. Oh, let's see. In Twitter of uh, Johnny Rotten, Johnny Lydon. Oh, man. Uh, I, 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 P.I.L. was just the band. I mean, they were perfect. Perfect. Oh, man. Black rubber bag. Oh, oh man. May the road rise with you. Oh, round and round. Oh, man. Just just a, a, an amazingly perfect band. Okay, let's get back to this. Uh, let's see. Okay, oh, back to the Dead Man Trigger. It says, um, by Dead Man Trigger, uh, Jay meant more like what Stephen Greer talked about, having set up and what Assange has, Julian Assange, uh, um, okay, with WikiLeaks. In case something were to happen to them, a lot of the info they have been sitting on gets instantly released to the public. It's basically uh, to prevent being taken out. Uh, Now, I get that. Um, I would say that, especially with Julian, that 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 has people in pause mode for sure. Because you know, you know that Julian is is sitting on uh, millions of of pages of information that haven't been released, and is that keeping him alive? One hundred percent. If anything freaky happens and 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 those go codes go out and that stuff gets released, it's got people nervous, as it should. 
excuse me, something in my throat. Talking too much tonight. Um, yeah. Now, uh, with a guy like Stephen Greer, is he sitting on the secret stuff that uh, is? <laughs> uh, it's possible. Uh, it's possible. I don't think it's to that extreme. Um, uh, I mean, it's it's a great conversation piece and and things. It, it, Greer could be. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, I do think. Okay, let me let me stay focused on this. When it comes to Greer, um, I think Greer knows more than we know. All right, I think that Greer knows stuff that he can't talk about. I, I'm pretty confident in that. But here's the deal, and I mean that. I, I I really really do. There's a few cats out there that may know some stuff, and and Stephen Greer is one of them. But and here's the but. I don't think that it matters. I think that he could say, go public with whatever he has without any repercussions to him personally, his family, or anybody else. And I'll tell you why. The government is not going to go after anybody when it comes to the UFO question. It's not going to happen. It's not. So anybody out there that is saying, well, I'm high, I, I, I can't, I, I, I'm, I, I've got an NDA, I've got uh, uh, an oath agreement with the United States, I've got, the, I've got a security clearance and, and there's prison. Nobody is going to go to prison. Nobody is going to get attacked by the United States government because they revealed secret stuff about UFOs. It's not going to happen. Because that means they are speaking the truth. And that's it. So that's why I, I constantly go back to my general statement with all of this. Anybody that you know their name, anybody that you know their name, doesn't know anything about UFOs, doesn't know the secret stuff, isn't, hasn't been exposed to it, hasn't, hasn't. Those people are not talking. They're not. In the, these are people that you do not know. That's it. That's it. And if they did know, they, and we know their names, you know, let's suppose. Uh, I'll give you an example. A perfect example of this. All right. When uh, the statements were made uh, by uh, uh, when the statements were made, man, I keep uh, uh, um, hold on for a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this quote up. I'm going to, I'm going to get this quote up and let's see if, uh, I want, uh, I, I want, I want to get this, this quote correct. Okay. Pa, 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 pa. Oh, I can't pull up the quote. Okay, well, anyway, I'm going to have to paraphrase. I wanted to read this directly. Uh, a perfect example of this is Dr. Eric Davis. And Dr. Eric Davis is quoted in the New York Times in saying probably the most profound statement ever in the history of mankind. And that is the United States government is in possession of flying saucers right now. And he claims that he said this to the United States Senate. Okay. That is the release of the most extreme 
extreme importance. But nothing happened to him. Nothing happened. So there's two ways to look at it. One, Dr. Eric Davis is lying straight through his teeth and he made it up and there you go. The flip side to that is that Dr. Eric Davis knows this to be true. Maybe he's seen the flying saucers. Maybe he's been there. He knows he's stating his fact, and he stated this to the United States Senate. Right? That is disclosure of the most extreme. But nothing happened. Security oath? Uh, Is he bound by something? Well, he broke it then. He broke it. Did he go to prison? Nothing happened. Nothing happened. So that's my position on all of this. If anybody is in the know and they came out and said something, they're not going to prison. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing happened to Eric Davis. He's literally saying, we have flying saucers. We have crashed. We have crashed flying saucers. I said this to the Senate. I told the Senate that we have flying saucers. Holy crap. He didn't go to prison. He broke his oath if he has one. His security clearance is null and void now if he's telling the truth. Nothing happened. That's my point. And I will constantly go back to this over and over again. So with Stephen Greer, if he's sitting on the golden stuff, come out with it. There's nothing that's going to happen to Dr. Greer. Quote me. Nothing happened to Eric Davis, and he's supposed to be legit, dude. (laughs) Right? He's quoted in the New York Times. There you go. All right, let's see. From the viral side, are we living in a real-life Truman show? Possibly. Possibly. I guess that, okay, there's a couple of things that would suggest this as being a possibility. Okay, so we can look at it two ways. Is it the physics world, right, Uh, uh, extra dimensions, multiverses, you know, and and that side of it, uh, the simulation theory and everything else, and okay, and we're living in a binary world, and and, and we still have... Uh, free will, but it's part of the game that we're involved in. Okay, so there's that part of it. That Truman Show aspect of it. Is there another aspect of it where this is like the movie The Truman Show, that we are living in just something that is created for us, and and we think that all of this is is reality, but it's not, and it's for somebody else's entertainment, right? And it's more of a physical thing. It's not a a binary simulation theory aspect of it. Is it possible? Yeah. It is. The reason why, uh, this is a funny thing to talk about in in years past, right? Where we, we come up with these ideas and we think about them and we talk about it and it's creative and okay, you know. Uh, going back to you know the Philip K. Dick uh, aspect of it, the Dickian aspect of it, there's Dickery afoot on planet Earth. The the Dickian aspect of it, um, but then we go through 2020, and it's not just the pandemic. It's not just the health aspects of things. It's everything else that occurred in 2020. The most extreme of the extremes. It's the, it's the politics. It's the unrest in the streets. You know, you know the George Floyd video. Um, these other social media all of the conspiracy theories, all of these things that were laid out for us in 2020, that will solidify this this argument and this possibility where we can step back and go, wow, that was strange, right? It removed us from any semblance of reality. There was just no question about it that we were exposed 
to a whole nother world, a whole nother lifestyle, a whole nother thing that we didn't think was possible. And and in some aspects, we're still going through it today. We we haven't quite cleared it. You know, we're at the edge, right? We can see the exit door, right? And we're getting close. The crowd is there and the door is about to open, but we're still not there. Still not there. Um, I did look at uh, today, by the way, I want to say this before I move on. I went uh, and looked at all of the uh, COVID numbers uh, worldwide. And we are at uh, current infection rates today that we haven't seen since June, May of 2020, right? Where it was on its way up, that, that low point. Well, we have gone up, peaked, and have come back down, and now we are at where we were in May and June of 2020. It has dropped. I mean, nosedived. And the death rate, too, as well. Same thing. Same thing. It's, it hasn't dropped as fast, but it's dropping. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. Now, it what's causing it? it has has the virus just run its natural course you know and and that's just what we're seeing this is just a natural thing um i'm not sure if there's enough vaccines out there that have been administered to cause this uh but that certainly would have its effect too as well i don't know but i'm just relieved because we were going up at such a fast rate we were getting close to a million a day and that it was right there but just peaked, peaked, and now back. And you can see in the chart where it's at now, we are now at the numbers. We're about 200, 250,000 infections daily, which, again, hasn't been seen since May and June of last year. So hopefully we'll see this continue to drop, continue to drop. I'm going to watch this. But it is a daily drop now that is measurable, and you can see it. Um, hopefully it's not going to go back up, but I, I, maybe it's just going to finally disappear. I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right, let's get back to the questions. A, are you a spook? <laughs> and B, would you like to change your answer? Ah, okay. I have been told many, 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 many times over the years that uh, I, I'm an asset of the CIA. All right. Now, um, do I know that I'm an asset of the CIA? No. Because if I am, they're really good. They're very clever. Very clever. Because, no. Um, I know that daily what my routine is how i develop my thoughts um who i'm selecting as a guest um and and booking shows and how i move forward in my daily life so i'm assuming that all of those decisions rest with rita and myself i'm pretty confident that I'm not influenced, but if they were doing their job, I wouldn't know it, right? That's how they do it. I've watched enough movies to know how this is done, but, but no. And now the other direct part of this question is, and you know, has, has an agency, any one of them, reached out to me saying, okay, Jimmy, uh, come work for us? No, nope, hasn't happened. That something overt, has something overt o o occurred? No, right? Um, I assume that I've been in touch with members of the agency, uh, agencies, but that's it. Right uh, in a in a very non direct way. I'm assuming that that has to have happened, and I I have my suspicions about a few different actors out there. That being said, have I been approached officially? No, I have not. No, no, no. I had that strange uh, occurrence 
at our house five or six years ago that happened uh, twice um, in in a week where these feds showed up at my house saying that they were part of the census. <laughs> and clearly they were not. They were not. Not dressed like that. Not looking like that. The two football players, too, as well. That was pretty interesting. And the cars that they drove, which were parked across the street, and I could see that, too, as well. Um, but uh, that that's it. They got the door slammed on them twice. Uh but that was it. And I just felt like, I felt like they just wanted to see me. That's what I kind of feel, you know, looking back at it, they just wanted to just like make their presence known. Let's make this contact. And that's it. They never came back. And if they were members of the census, why didn't they come back? Cause they didn't get any info out of me. Why didn't they come back? Right. So it's, that, that it was just this weird thing. And dang it, the problem that I have with that, that encounter was I didn't do what I should have done. I should have immediately shot video. I should have gone out onto the street. I should have taken pictures and shot video of the cars. I should have asked him some questions. I should have done all of this. And I didn't. I just regret it, and and I remember talking to Rita about it later uh, the first time. I was like, man, this weird thing happened today. And then sure enough, bam, the next day it happened again, and I, I, didn't, I didn't do what I should have done. That was some men in black action for real, and I didn't do it. Anybody ever ask me about the men in black, I will tell them that story. Yeah, that was bizarre. Okay, let's see. Now, would you change your answer? Ah, I think I just did. No, I wouldn't change my answer. I think I answered uh, very straight up. Okay, from Tom. Hi, Jimmy. What's the first thing you do when you get done with the show? Ah, okay. Well, the first thing that I do, this is technical stuff. Uh, I go and I grab the audio files and I edit the commercials out. And I uh, get everything done for our podcast without commercials. Is that what you're asking about? And that takes me about 40 to 45 minutes after the show. So that goes from 10 to about 10, 30, 10, 45, if there's no issues. So that's the first thing. Um, also, while I'm doing that, everything gets sent over to Drew for our membership area. All of that has to happen immediately after the show. But probably what you're really asking about, the other thing that happens that is more critical than that is I call Rita and say, what's for dinner? Yep, yep, yep. That's the most critical thing. So we figure out dinner plans. Am I picking something up? Or is there something going to be cooked at the house? Um, and then we immediately, uh, after all of that is decided, then we just watch our shows. We watch our shows. We have a ton of things that we need to watch every single night and we do all of that. Okay. Uh, next Diana, what happened to the Mayans? Yeah. Yippers, yippers. I don't think uh, we'll ever get the real answers to that. I think that they grew and expanded a little bit too fast uh, and didn't have control of agriculture and, and feeding and things. Um, uh, because they disappeared as quick as they did, um, and it could have been disease, it could have been uh, a lot of things. I don't know. Maybe they get on spaceships and, and left the planet. But jungles grow quickly. And if you've never been to Central or South America and ever experienced the sound of jungles growing, because it's just crackling and moving all the time, it's just growing, that uh, everything that was built, all the infrastructure for the Mayans was covered up. Covered up. I've seen it personally covered up 
immediately the jungle will give it give it a couple of years man you could have the most amazing town built split come back a couple of years later it's gone it's covered it's covered in trees vines growth vegetation it's covered and today we are just now understanding how complex the mine infrastructure was and the cities and the thousands of miles of roads that they had constructed there are I'm, I'm telling you right now there are not dozens there are probably hundreds of pyramids that we know nothing about it's overgrown in jungle that you can't walk through can't get through can't do it so we're using lidar and other ground penetrating radar and we're flying over uh the honduras and guatemala and belize and and uh honduras and costa rica finding out how widespread the mayan culture really was i think it was much bigger than we are thinking today much bigger now what happened to that that is something that we need to get the answers to and diana i think that is a great question all right let's uh, see i've got tons of stuff here i'm going to get to let's get to one more question before the break Jimmy, will you ever have your guest on with you talking so we can see you both? No. Not going to do that. I don't want to turn this show into a television broadcast. I don't want to do it. I don't. It's theater of the mind. I'd rather have... The only reason why uh, the bunker cam started... That, that's there for the fader knots, and that was the original thing. And then we had issues with a couple of things, and we, we had to use the YouTube software, and YouTube then would not let us broadcast the bunker cam. This is how all of this started, without broadcasting on YouTube Live. That was it. That was the only reason why YouTube... Um, and the live video stream is there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on YouTube. YouTube forced our hand, and it made me very, very angry. I wanted the bunker cam to be just for the fader knots. I don't, I don't want to turn this into a TV show. I don't want to do it. I don't. I could flip a switch right now, run a guest over, and 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 do it. I. No, I don't want this to be a TV show. This is a radio broadcast first. That's number one. Number two, not every guest has a video camera. Not every guest has a computer. I, I would say half of our guests that we run on the show is a phone interview. There's no video at all. And I don't want to, and we have to do this show three, four nights a week, and uh, setting up a video feed and and getting all of that and setting all of that it's not what we're about i don't want to i don't want to consider it so no no there's no reason for that this is a radio show i want you to hear the voice of the guest and i want you to paint your own picture as to what you're hearing and that's the way it's run it's not going to change it's not going to be a tv show that's it suzanne I don't want to be uh, uh, breaking hearts here, but that's just the way that it is. And I hope that you understand. This is Fade to Black. Tonight is our AMA. Ask me anything. We've got uh, one segment left. Questions are here. I'm going to try to get to them all. If you want to squeeze in a last-minute question, post it over on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. And I'll be right back after we take this short break. Stay with us. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, Reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. 
Click on their banner at jimmychurchradio.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Hello, my name is Billy Carson, and I am a best-selling author and the founder of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Together with my team, we have built an all-new conscious streaming TV platform designed with every family member in mind. If you have ever wanted to travel the world and attend lectures and workshops from your favorite speakers but weren't able to, look no further. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. There are dozens of workshops and lectures from speakers you know and love. We have also included amazing categories to assure that your consciousness is entertained and elevating on a daily basis. Amazing interviews, ancient history, ascension knowledge, wisdom teachings, documentaries, conspiracies, mysteries, health and fitness, conscious cooking, meditations, finance, yoga, and so much more. To start your free trial on any mobile device or computer, surf to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's Forbidden Knowledge with the number four, ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Again, visit ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app. Free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, our AMA, Ask Me Anything. We've got questions from Spreaker, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. I've got a load of questions here. I'm going to try to get to all of them. And I was just uh, sitting here during the break, and I saw a couple of questions here that popped up, and uh, I don't know if they're in my feed, but I want to address these uh, directly as quickly as I can before I get back to everything else that's being fed into here. Third Stone Studio says, what was the first car you ever drove as opposed to the first one that was yours? That's an excellent question. The first car I ever drove was my dad's Volkswagen bus when I was five. And this is what my dad would do. And thinking about this today, that's the crazy. He go to prison for 15 years for this, but he would put me on his lap and let me drive. I'm talking about drive it, man. I'm going down. I, I'm sitting on my dad's lap. No seat belts. I don't think there were seat belts in that van. Um, and now his feet are on the floor. Okay. I'm five, right? I'm on his lap. So he's shifting. He's shifting, but I'm freaking driving, man. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about, I think I changed lanes. I, I probably passed cars, turn signals. I was the exciting part was getting to use the turn signals. 
But we would, man, I, I, I'm talking about I drove it. Man, we would take off, and I would be so excited. He put me on his lap, and uh, in front of our house, back out of the parking spot, <laughs> and I'm driving, man, and I'm, I'm talking about I drove this thing. It was so cool. And uh, as I grew up, uh, he taught me everything in that, um, how to shift um, as I, you know, at now I'm 10 and uh, 11, 12, my feet could touch the floor and, and, and I drove that man. And, and I, that's, that's where I learned how to drive Volkswagen van. And my dad owned like, if he's listening right now, he's laughing, but uh, he probably owned, my memory says three maybe four, three or four Volkswagen vans over the years. So it seemed like we always had one in the driveway. Oh man. We had one in Panama. He found a Volkswagen van in Panama. Yeah. I mean, we always had one. I remember the red one. We had a blue one. Uh, I want to say we had maybe two red ones. Um, yeah, going back to the sixties, imagine what those would be worth today. So I wanted to answer that, but I learned to drive, uh, a Volkswagen van, eight, five years old. No, no question about it. I was in kindergarten. I remember the, um, Fort Sheridan, Fort Sheridan. I was in kindergarten and, uh, driving all over North Chicago and Highland park, all over the army base, how he wasn't arrested. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, this is from TB. It, it's 2026. Elon gives you five free tickets on the SpaceX flight to Mars. Do Rita and you go? And what food do you sneak on board? All right. Well, everybody knows what we're going to sneak on board. We're going to sneak deep dish uh, Chicago pizzas. Can't make that trip without it. Do we go? Um, I, do we go? That's a tough call, and Rita and I uh, actually got in a little bit of an argument about this a couple of months ago. Um, do we go? Is it a return trip? Is it a one-way trip? Right? Is it If it's a one-way trip, do we go? That's, you know, if it's a guaranteed return trip and we have the possibility of returning, I think we go. Now, Rita and I discussed this. If it's a one-way trip, Rita doesn't want to do it. And if it was a one-way trip, I was like, man, why wouldn't she? Su-? And she was not happy about me <laughs> even suggesting leaving the family and, and, and things. And she's right about that. I mean, I'm not young. If you're young and you want to do something for humanity and you want to go out there and do it, that's one thing. But once you have family and kids and and things and, and a life back here, do you take a one-way trip and leave your family? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's a tough call. But would Rita and I do it? We would do it if there's a return trip. And Chicago deep dish pizzas would have to be involved. Okay, uh, this is from Bo Hall. Jimmy, have you ever run into the men in black? Um, not officially. Do you want to? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what version of the Men in Black? Right? The Men in Black version like Will Smith. Right? That version of Men in Black where they're not aliens. Right? They're just working for an agency and they're out there doing the alien agenda. Right? Okay. All right. Yeah. I would like to meet them. Uh, now, what about the other version of Men in Black? The alien version, the other ones that people are talking about where they are not the fate, you know, that it was an obvious situation of them being another species, that they weren't human, trying to act human, right? Driving the classic black car, but having issues with trying to be human and having that being obvious. Uh, I would like to meet them too. Now, what is strange is I've had so many sightings that I've been public about. Why haven't I got the official version, uh, the official visit from the men in black? I don't know. 
you know, um, nobody's wanted to change my story, I guess. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know why I haven't. The official Men in Black, no. Haven't haven't run into that. Not that I have noticed, by the way. I have, um, uh, I'm going to get moving on to these questions, but I have on occasion been driving where I had, I don't want to get too specific here because if it did really happen, I don't want to tip the hat. I don't want them to know that I know. But there were, I, I'm talking about locations, but there were on occasion a couple of times, and I never went to read about this because I kind of blew it off ultimately, but where I had an S black SUV, um, follow me. And this happened, man, this happened more than once. And, uh, one that went onto the freeway, but here in the Valley where I had a black SUV behind me and I'm watching it in the mirror and I'm like changing lanes. I did a couple of things and then I'm watching what's going on. And then it disappeared. So it was just coincidence. I'm pretty confident about that. It wasn't the men in black. But what I'm saying is I'm aware of looking for stuff like this to happen. That's all that I'm saying. Where I've noticed it a couple of times and I was like, I'm not like, okay, here we go. This, uh, and I'm looking in the rear view. Okay. All right. Well, that's weird. That's weird. Okay. All right. This has been going on for a couple of miles. They're hanging back. Nobody's passing me. I've changed. I've driven down a couple of, right. You know, that's kind of weird. And then it disappeared. So no, it wasn't the men in black, but I am constantly, uh, running with my radar on. Okay. So to answer your question, yes. Would I like to run into him? Sure. Am I expecting it? I am. I am I am ready to go with it. I am absolutely ready to go. Uh, Jimmy, have you ever seen Frank Marino play live? No. Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush Live, one of the great live albums of all time. Uh, if so, how old were you? No, I never saw uh, Frank Marino back in the day. When Frank Marino was Frank Marino... Um, you know, the Mahogany Rush days and Mahogany Rush Live. I was in South America. I was in Central America. I was in Panama uh, when that album was released. God, man, I just love that 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 album, by the way. But I was I was out of the country. And I don't believe when I came back to the United States, I don't think he was touring then. And so would I have loved I would have loved uh, uh to have seen Frank Marino uh play live. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Johansson says, Jimmy, your favorite book. Uh, I think that's a pretty simple answer. Um, uh, because I've read it, the series so many times, um, Arthur C. Clarke's Rama, uh, the Rama series of books. Yeah. Rama, uh, Rama two gardens of Rama. Um, just an insanely great, uh, series of books. And, I read them over and over and over again. So, yeah, I, I think that's without question. There's a, a lot a lot of other great books um, that, that I've read, and some of them many times. Uh, but I keep going back to Arthur C. Clarke Rama. So, yeah, and if you haven't read them, uh, you need to go and do it. The Gardens of Rama, Rama, Rama 2, Rama Revisited, uh, I think there's four, um, but should be a movie. And I don't know why it's not. I think it's probably too long, too big, too complex. Um, it would have to be like Lord of the Rings. It would have to be three or four movies. Um, but uh, wow, it should be a book. I've got that whole thing so visualized, that ship and the star cluster and and every, oh, the different beings and the robots and the and the bird uh the the eagle um it, it, in my mind it's just so there it's so riveting but there you go okay uh does listening to jimmy church make jimmy church smarter <laughs> what? 
Ah, I, you know, I have not gone back and listened to a complete fade to black replay. I haven't done it one time. I have listened to clips that people have posted short, um, and I never even get through it. So I haven't even, and even that is rare. I mean, I'm talking about, you can count that on one hand. Um, I have never listened to a coast to coast show. Haven't done it. I have watched a few of my TV shows, a few, a few. I'm always uncomfortable with it. Um, the unexplained, the complete season. Haven't seen it. I have it. Haven't watched it. <laughs> I haven't done it. I haven't done it. I watched the intro to one show. I, I think I watched a segment of one show. That's it. So, no. Listening to me. No, I've, I've never listened to me. I've never done it. All right. Next. Godzilla or King Kong choose. What? Godzilla or King Kong choose. Uh, I, Godzilla. Godzilla. I would absolutely. Godzilla. <laughs> Oh, man, I went through a, a a period in my life, and I only did this because I thought it was cool at the time uh, because so many people were doing it. The Japanese films, right? Okay. Um, Mothra, right? Oh, man. Uh, giant robot. And I and I went back and and got videotapes and and was watching stuff on alternate channels in in the in the 80s. Um and I watched a ton of that stuff. And I went from being very skeptical and I don't care to absolutely loving it. Loving it. And I came away a huge Godzilla fan. Not the Matthew Broderick. Ver no, 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 no. But that all that old Japanese stuff. Um, I went, uh, I think it's on... I think it's on Disney Plus on the Marvel Channel. There's a series called 616 about uh, this series of documentaries about Marvel. And this is, go watch it. One of them is the history of Spider-Man, the Japanese version of the TV series that happened in Japan and how they did it. Go and watch that. And if you don't fall in love with Spider-Man all over again, you have no soul. None, but yeah, big fan of all the Japanese stuff. Okay, vaccination, yay or nay? <sighs> Man, I don't know. I don't know. Now that I've gotten COVID and I went through it, you can make your own decisions. That's a that's a personal thing for so many reasons. Uh, but you don't want COVID. And vaccination for those that are vulnerable, yeah, absolutely. My parents get vaccinated. You do not want to go through what I went through. Now, that's that part of it. Would I personally do it? I don't want COVID again. So now I'm 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 a walking paradox where I'm scared of the vaccination. I am, but I'm really scared of COVID. COVID is nothing nice. I don't want to go through that again. I don't. You know, so now that I've had it, do I have certain antibodies? Am I uh, immune to it? And I've read all the research on this saying yay or nay to that part of it too. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Right now I'm a nay because I'm fresh off of COVID. I'm a nay, but I don't want it again. And for those out there who haven't gotten COVID, uh, two months ago when these numbers are where they were, man, I would definitely say go and get vaccinated. If you don't mind it, go and do it because you don't want COVID. But the numbers are now really on the decline. And is there a need for the vaccination out there? 
is it just going to burn itself out? So, yeah, that's tough. I don't want to be a parent. I don't want to be hypocritical. I don't want to be, but I'm just telling you, COVID is gnarly. Oh, man, I'm scared of it. Scared of it. Scared of it. Six weeks of those headaches. Ask Rita what I went through. Ask Rita. It was it was just gnarly. Uh, this is from Trish. Trish says, when COVID allows you to travel, will you eventually come to Africa? Yes. Now, the question is, what part of Africa? Do we go south? Well, obviously, Egypt is in play, right? Egypt is in play. But uh, other parts of Africa. And I was uh, talking about this uh, the other day uh, with Dolan. There's a long list of things that we had planned for 2020. We had a list. We had England in play. We had Armenia in play. We had Egypt all in play. And also Greece, too, as well. There was, uh, that was a family thing. But all in play. And now all of that has been put off. And there is everything else that is out there. You know, um, uh, Japan, China. Russia, right? Machu Picchu, man. Chicken Itza, you know, Puma Punku, Peru, Bolivia, all of these just things that need to get visited. And and all of that takes time. Plus, we have the show. We had a, a, other obligations and conferences and things that we have to get completed throughout the year. So how do we insert these international trips in play and what gets priority? I can assure you this out of the gate. Once, uh, once things are opened up, our Armenia is, is first bam. We're already making plans for that. Um, so Armenia is, is done and that's going to be September, uh, right in there, you know, later part of uh, 2021 of this year, but Armenia is, is in play. And then we're going to be into 2022 and what's going to take priority and how are we going to get everything done? Is Africa there? Africa is there. You know, do we do, do we go South Africa? Do we do, oh man, I would just love to do that. Oh, so many great places. I mean, I would like to go to Morocco, man. I want to go to the Straits of Gibraltar. I want to cruise through that in a boat, pull up into that port and go hit a bazaar. And go look at the uh, the ancient uh, structures there. Love to be able to do that. But, of course, uh, Egypt is high on the list. All right. Man, I'm running out of time, and I've got too many questions here. Okay, what's next? Um, what is under the sand in Egypt? Wouldn't we like to know that? I keep saying this. If I was Elon Musk, right, if I had, like, the pile of money, I would vacuum the sand. I would go and move it. I would physically move the sand to another spot. Just suck it all up and and just go. Move across. A bunch of giant trucks with huge hoses just vacuuming up the sand till you get to dirt. Vacuum it all up. Move it to one other spot. Just, just move it. You know? And like a snow plow, right? That's what I would do if I had the money. I, and, and Elon should get on top of that. What about old Pat Travers? Did you ever see him? I did. I saw Pat on the Smoking Whiskey Tour. Snorting, cause, what was it? Smoking Whiskey and Snorting Cocaine. What was that song called? Saw him on that tour. I'm trying to think. I think that was uh, Triumph. Triumph and Pat Travers. Pat Travers Open, Market Square Arena, 1980. 81, 80. Man, that was a good record, too. Pat Travers. Loved it. All right. Uh, let's see. Man, I'm out of time. Okay. Third time is a charm. Would you set up a dead man's trap for yourself? Uh, no. 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 My secrets are safe with me, number one. And number two, I would only expose anything like that on, on my deathbed. Like I would have a book ready to go, and I would give it to Rita and say, okay, publish this now. 
because I got 24 hours. So just let that go. There you go. Publish. That's what I would do. So I, I wouldn't have to worry about it. That's what I would do. I wouldn't have a like a dead man's switch. So there you go. Um, uh, hold on for a second. The boring company goes to Egypt. There was something else here that I saw that I wanted to get to. Um, okay, my first car was a 1966 uh, Mustang. That was my first car, 289, uh, four on the floor. That that car, somebody posted something the other day, that, uh, and I saw this in social media. It's funny, I'm thinking about this now. Where they said, what was the first car that you did uh, 100 miles an hour in? And that was it. That was that 1966 Mustang. And I was speaking about our drummer, uh, Jerry Reese Camp, earlier. Jerry was in the passenger seat. Um, I think I had Randy Smiley in the back seat of this car. We are on German Church Road, and which had like a mile or two between stop signs, right? And I just opened that thing up. I I had only had it. For, I was living with my parents. Um, I, um, I only had it for a week. Just got it. And we were on German Church Road, and I just opened that thing up. We're probably smoking weed. I'm 16. And and I'm looking at the speedometer, and we got this thing up. I think the speedometer went to 140, and I got this thing up to a buck 20. Right? <laughs> and... And I see up in the distance the stop sign for like 16th Street. And I see it. And I don't realize how quick that stop sign came up on us. I'm doing 120 miles an hour. And I start to slow down thinking I'm just going to slow down and stop at the stop sign. And, and it came up on, and I ended up, not only did I not stop, I blew through that stop sign at about 80 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. Anything could have happened. And I remember as we went through that stop sign, I think we all did the same thing. We looked both ways as quick as we could on uh, 16th Street, and we survived. And after that, I slowed down to whatever, 40 miles an hour. And I said to myself, I'll never do that again. That was just stupid. Well, anyway, Jerry Reeskamp, who was sitting next to me, my drummer, threw up on the dashboard. (laughs) It was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon, middle of the day, and I watched my gnarly drummer, man's man, puke on the dashboard. Yeah, I had to pull up to my house with my parents. My mom going, "What happened? Nothing. Bad, bad shrimp salad uh, for lunch." And uh, so there you go. All right, that wraps another AMA here on Fade to Black. Great questions all night. I know that I left a lot on the table, everybody. And if I didn't get to everybody, we'll do it next time. All right, we've got we've got Fader night tomorrow night. Open lines all night long. If I didn't get to your questions tonight, call in tomorrow and hit me with it. Fade to Black's executive producers, Rita Camarion. Show is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitola, Mark D. Kovar, Webmasters, Drew the Geek, Music, Doug Aldridge. Intro, Space Boy, SpaceboyMusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. and syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast on a copyright of 2021 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow night is Thursday night. Fader night. Open lines all night long. Until then, I want everybody to be safe. And now it's time to Fade to Black. Yeah.